Hey everyone, uh, the purpose of this video is to go over the Robbins closed loop tuning method for determining the PI or PID settings for a controller. This method was developed by an engineer, Robbins, who worked at Dow Chemical to tune the compositions of the distillation column. So for clarity and presentation though, I'm not going to use the distillation column in the Control Station Loop Pro Trainer, and instead I'm going to use the heat exchanger just because it's a little bit easier to see the values. Um, if I would print out the plots, it would take a little bit longer, do some calculations, I would do that on the distillation column. So your assignment is going to be to use the Robbins method to tune the top and the bottoms compositions controller using the Robbins method um, that we'll go through here. Okay, so let's first start by looking at what the Robbins method is. So the Robbins method, so this is in the slides that go along with the Riggs Chemical and Bioprocess Control Textbook. Um, chapter 9 slides. So the, the Robbins closed loop tuning method is as follows. So it starts by, you know, the when you turn on the controller, it's going to have values of the KC and reset time that are already in there. So record those values, set the derivative time equals to zero, and take the reset time and multiply it by 10. And the reason why we do that is we make it so that the reset time is so large that it doesn't really affect the control, doesn't affect the controller process. And then we're going to step up in the set point and we're going to step down and we're going to look at the process response. So we're going to record the first peak to valley difference as a percentage of the step size for both going up and down. Um, and then what we want to do is adjust the value, adjust the KC until we have the first peak to valley that is about 16% of the step size. And this is going to be our optimum value of KC. Also we're going to record the time that it takes from when we apply the step change to reach the first peak. And this is going to be called the Robbins response time. Okay, and finally, we're going to set tau i equal to this value, the Robbins response time, and then kc to the optimal value. And this should be, give us a pretty well-tuned controller for many processes. Again, this was developed for distillation columns, so I suppose it would work well in those systems, and it would give us a good first guess in other systems. Okay, and now a specific note that was um, provided by Dr. Gooding, who used to teach this class but is now retired. He says if you can't get any overshoot without exceeding 16% peak to valley, cut the tau i in half and try again. If you can't ever get any overshoot, then you just need to go along with 16% uh, with uh, tau i, with tau i turned off. Um, record the time and that should give you a first guess. So you might have to tinker a little bit with the values of kc and tau i, but it'll get you close to what you need. All right, well, let's do this now using control station. Okay, so we said we, I'm going to go to the, my controller. I'm going to turn this on, PID. Um, I'm going to take my reset time and I multiply it by 10 and I have 20. So I'm going to start with a controller gain of 1. Okay, I'm going to let this go for a minute. Okay, apply step change. So I'm going to go, you know, maybe in, from 140 up to 145. See how this response. Okay, I didn't get any overshoot. But also, I don't have 16% first peak to valley relative to the step change. So I'm going to step this back down, 140. OK, so now let's change this. Let's, let's go with 4 on here. OK, let's do a step change now, 145. What does it look like? Oh, yeah, so that's way too much. Step this back down to 140. Hopefully, the process will behave. It'll dampen out a little bit. Let's try a gain of 2.5. Okay, it'll give us a step change of 145. Again, we look at first peak, okay? Peak to valley. This is more, this is about half, maybe a little bit less than half of my step change. So gain is still too large, but let me step this back down. Again, still too large coming down. So again, maybe we'll put this at 2. See how this looks. Again, we want to let this settle out. Then we apply our step change, 145. Okay, we see our first peak to valley. Um, it's a little bit more than 16%. So again, let's bring this down to 1.5. I want to step back down, 140. Should 
probably keep it the same. Let the process settle out a little bit. Okay, in reality, we let this settle out, but I'm going to go ahead and now do here. So on this change with the gain equal to 1, so my first peak to valley is shown here. That looks to be a little bit less than my step change, a little bit less than 16%. Really what I want to do is um, print out this data, do a calculation, but I can kind of tell by eye. It's a little bit low, so I'm going to change this to 1.8. I'll get back down to my starting point. Okay, again, we'll let this level out. I'm going to clock functions, reset simulation clock to zero, just to have some easier values to work with. Okay, again, we're letting it settle out. Reset clock functions, reset to zero. Okay, now let's see how this works, 145. First change is 145. Okay, we see first peak to valley. Now we're looking a little bit closer to 16%. Again, it might be high. Uh, I want to come back down to my starting point. And again, so what I want to do is maybe, um, what did we say? We wanted to cut tau, and, tau i in half and try again. So 10. Cut it in half. Try again. And so now we do our step change, 145. Okay, now it looks like we're getting pretty looks like we're getting pretty close to this first peak to valley. So we can see that peak to valley is about 16% of the step change. The time that it takes, we go from 24 to about 27, maybe that looks about 2.8. So on my controller, my reset time, I'm at about the right gain. My reset time should be about 2.8. So come here, 2.8, 1.8. And let's see how the process responds. 145. All right, so look, and then step back down. It's not too bad for the heat exchanger. Okay, so we have, and if I would have um, printed out the data and done some calculations, I might got a little bit closer, but what we can see here is that the offset removal is fairly slow, our decay ratio is small, so we could stand to have a slightly higher, um, slightly lower tau i, maybe I'll drop this down to 2.5, but again, the Robbins method gets us pr pretty close to what we are, so again, let's look at stepping down, now change, change that to 2.5, let's go ahead and step up. Okay, again, I can probably go maybe a little bit lower, 2.0 or so on the on the tau. But again, like all methods, tuning methods, they're not going to be perfect for every control system. But again, depending on the process that you're working on, there might be a good controller. And but then, again, once we tune the controller, we have to look at the response and evaluate the performance. So like we did here, we saw there was slow offset removal. All we had to do is decrease tau i until we had offset removal. And now what we can see here is that we have a, a good decay ratio. The decay ratio looks to be about one fifth. Good performance overall. So that's the Robbins method plus a little bit of tinkering to determine the right settings. Um, so good luck tuning the, what is it, what are you going to do? You're going to do the distillation column in the control station loop pro software.